Hello, Veteran Outdoorsman here, and today what we're going to talk about is making repairs to an old fishing rod and kind of cleaning it up. What I've got is an old Renegade uh, carried by Walmart fishing rod, um, five foot ultra light. It's actually a, when I got it, actually a really, really good rod. Um, but I didn't have it for very long. And you see the insert busted out of here, a little porcelain insert. And I used it like that for a while. Um, and then it kind of just sat and never got used. So... I want to clean it up and I'm going to show you how to repair it and this won't be the the slickest job but it'll certainly work and maybe you've got an old one that sat in the bed of your truck or sat out by a window or something for a while maybe you get a little bit of sun damage something like that first thing you're going to want to do is clean it up and how are we going to do that I'm going to take some good old WD-40. Everybody's got to have WD-40 in duct tape. If it moves and it's not supposed to, use the duct tape. If it doesn't move and it is supposed to, use the WD-40. And that'll fix most of the stuff around your house. Anyway, it's a multi-purpose. It actually does clean some oxidation off of plastic products and things. Um, Keep some press plastics pliable. Uh, it does add a little bit of a protective quality to plastics, which are petroleum products, and so is WD-40. Now, this was a really, really dirty rod here a second ago, and I know I just I wiped a lot of the dirt off of it, etc. But look at what all came off of there. That's not just dirt. That's oxidation, sun damage, etc. That looks pretty clean and shiny. So, then what do we have to do next? And here's the thing. You say, well, I, I wouldn't mind repairing this rod, but, um, you know, what if I break it beyond repair? Well... If you do, honestly, it wasn't usable to start with, so not that big a deal. But it, maybe you've got a higher dollar rod, and you're a little more concerned about that. Let me get you to where you're going to be able to see me just a little bit better. That's probably better. There we go. Maybe you get a higher dollar rod, and you're a little more concerned about that. Well, then find a rod repair person and spend the money have it done now in order to take a little bit of weight off of this thing help with the balance a little bit while i'm working on it, i'm going to take this reel and it's just a cheap zip code um 11 i think a uh, little spin under spin rod a reel which is a is a nice inexpensive reel um, that works fairly well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut into the varnish and the threads. And again, hey, this is a cheap rod. Maybe this isn't going to work. Um, if it doesn't, just not that big a deal it's already broken so it's worth a shot and say well where do you get the pieces from well everyone that's fished for any period of time has broken a rod beyond repair and maybe you save it for the real seat Something like that. 
that's where I got the other piece. And typically I probably would have already had it prepped and ready to go. But, but I want to show you the whole process of how to repair this rod. And a razor knife would probably be a better thing. But here's the deal. You're, uh, you're out camping. You're out fishing somewhere. You bust a guide on a rod. Maybe you've got another broken rod in a truck. Maybe you've got a really, really cheap rod that's got good guides that you just don't like fishing with. Maybe you find a busted rod in a trash can in the parking area. You probably don't have your razor knife and sandpaper and all that stuff with you. But there's a good chance you got WD-40, maybe some brake cleaner. Um, some things that you can make this work. And that is what we're going to do today. That is what we're going to do. You can certainly use better tools to make this work, but you don't have to. You can make it work with what you have. So then we're going to be real careful not to gouge into the rod blank itself and try to remove the rest of this thread and varnish as much as we can. If you do have a piece of sandpaper, something like that, it would be advantageous to use that. Again, this probably isn't going to be the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but it's going to be more than functional, and it actually should last for a while. Um, I mentioned you should things you should have, WD-40, duct tape, you know, that's kind of the old joke. If it moves and it's not supposed to, use the duct tape. If it doesn't move and it is supposed to, use the WD-40. But there really is a lot of truth to it. And they are common things that people have in their vehicle. Um, WD-40 especially. Uh, wouldn't necessarily recommend liquid wrench, PB blast, or something like that. Because those have heavier solvents. And it may eat some of the finish off your rod. But I've never tried it. So if you want to give it a try, hey, it's a broken rod anyway. What's, what are you going to lose? What do you got to lose? Um, but, you know, this is a trick... For the guy that uh, is out of town, maybe he's in a tournament, he busted a rod. He busted the eye off a rod. And here's the deal. He's not, you know, he gets in late, he gets in way in, whatnot. He's not going to have time to go buy another rod. Depending on the rules of the place, he might not even be allowed to leave the area. But, there is probably some spare parts sitting in somebody's toolbox or a trash can, etc. He gets back to camp. He can put that rod back into action. You say, well, I carry five or six of the same rod. Well, not everybody does. If you do, then you're fine. You use a different rod. But I'm here to tell you, take this rod for example. It's the only five foot ultralight I've got. And if I was fishing a finesse setup in tight cover, and that rod goes out of commission, well, I'm kind of up a creek. So here, I've got the butt section. Of another rod that I busted the tip off of. And we're going to do the same thing that I just did with that one. Take the eye off of it. Take the guide off of it. 
Some people call them eyes. Some people call them guides. You know what I'm talking about. Take that rod holder, that line holder thingy off of it. And you know, you're going to notice that the one that was on there was kind of a brass color. This one is not. You're also going to notice I'm not as careful with this one when I take it off. Because I'm not worried about hurting this rod. This rod's busting. So, what I'm going to do. I got some isopropyl alcohol. If you got carb cleaner, that'd probably work just fine. Something you might have in your vehicle. Um, hand sanitizer. That's something people carry all over now. Uh, some kind of degreaser. Remember, we wiped this down with WD-40. I've been touching it with my hands. I want to degrease it. Wipe that down. Do the same thing to the guide. Um, even like uh, mouthwash. It's got alcohol in it. It'll work in a pinch. Hot soapy water. You know, go to the bathroom, get you some paper towels, some water, some soap. That'll work. So what else you gonna need? Some thread. Well, I got some thread that I got from my wife's sewing machine, and that's what I'm gonna use. But you say, well, I don't have that. Five fifty cord, something people carry pretty common, and the inside of it's full of these threads. And not only that, it's twisted strand, stranded thread that you can even tear apart even further use for a thread like that and it'll work very well too um, and you're going to need some super glue some varnish something like that so what we're going to do is we'll make sure that's cleaned off because I just touched it with my fingers I'm going to put it in place here, kind of figure out where it needs to go. And it's not the perfect size, but the, the main thing is that it's between sizes of this one and this one. That's going to work. So I'm going to take a little bit of the thread, and I'm going to put it in place. Now, if you're somebody that ties flies, and you got your bobbin, that's really going to come in handy. For the life of me, I don't know where my bobbin went. I haven't tied flies in years. But I know I didn't throw it away because I don't throw anything away that I spent money on. My wife goes, uh huh. Yeah, well. If the worst thing I am is a pack rat, then I'll take that. So. You're going to make a couple of wraps just to hold it in place. And you're not going to do it real, real tight. Because you're going to want to be able to adjust it. But you're going to make a couple of wraps of this just to hold it in place. And the subsequent wraps are going to cover this. So... You're just going to hold it in place. And this is kind of tedious. But you're back at camp. You're back at your hotel room. You're bummed out because you busted your ride. You got nothing better to do. You've already called the wife and kids. Everybody's good back home. You got to have something to do. Certainly better than going out drinking with your buddies, and it's productive. So, now that's way off center, so I'm going to adjust it. 
I'm going to straighten it out. That looks better. I'm going to hold it out here. I'm going to sight through it just like a like a peep sight. That don't look too bad. So, I'm with this piece of thread, I'm just going to finish some tight wraps. And I'm not worried about it being real, real tight right now. Because we're going to do a finish wrap later. Right now, it's just stability and security. And I've already tied one knot on it. Um, so again, this is starting to unwind a little. Again, not that big a deal. So I'm going to hold this here. And I'm going to wrap this. And you can do a really, really kind of extravagant wrap. And make it look, especially if you got a bobbin, make it look pretty impressive. Um, not just a bobbin, maybe you've got some leather working tools, you've got a, a stitch all, something like that. Probably make it look better than I can. But I'm not as concerned about the appearance, the appearance, as I am, form, fit, and function. And I have every intention of using this rod. This is not a primary rod. It's been busted for years, but I've always regretted it. That's why I never got rid of it. And I have every intention of using it again. So, that's what I'm going to do. Again, tighten this one more time. Tie another overhand knot. And I, you know, if you know how to tie flies, you've done rod building, you probably know better knots than I do. But for what I'm doing right now, a double overhand works just fine. Now I knocked that a little bit out of alignment. Straighten it up again. And before I go too far, I'm going to take just a little daub. Super glue. Kind of get that start set, hold that thing in place. And what else it's going to do, if I ain't careful, I'm going to glue that bottle to the table. And you don't want to do that. So I'm going to wipe the excess off here with that alcohol soap rag. I don't want anybody to sit on it. Wipe a little bit of the excess off there. And now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten that up. I'm going to check it one more time for alignment. That's not bad. Probably not perfect, but it's not bad. Again, it's better than the busted eye that was on it already. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use 
this 450 guts 550 cord guts because it's a little thicker straight thread It's going to last, maybe not last longer, but it's going to suck up the glue better, and it's going to take less time because it's thicker. And I got me kind of a knotted mess here, but that's fine. Something else you can use this 550 cord gets for. Survival situation, camping situation, you can certainly use it as fishing line. Most places that sell it advertise it as that, as usable for that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of double wrap a few times so that that tag end stays in place. I'm going to Get some of that drying the glue off my hands because I don't want to glue myself to the rod. And remember, I don't have a bobbin, so I'm just going to hold it tight and spin it. And I'm not as concerned about appearance, like I said. So basically, I just want to cover all the gaps. all I'm really worried about. I've already got a little bit of glue on there to start to hold it in place and I just about glued my fingers. And hang on, you guys probably noticed this. I didn't. I've already started to wrap this around the bottom of the rod and that's where a bobbin would have come in handy. But I don't have one. Well, I don't know where it is. So I'm just trying to show you basically a field repair. There's certainly better ways to do it. There's certainly quicker ways to do it. And the best way is to pay somebody that knows what they're doing. Have them do it. But there is some satisfaction in doing things on your own. Um... There's also some frustration in doing things on your own. But that's fine. You learn. The more you do something like this, the better you're going to get. The more likely you're going to be able to do it again. The more likely you're going to, next time something like this happens, not get as stressed out about it. Because you're going to know how to fix it. Somebody's going to say, where's that boy come from? Was he... He thought he said he's from Missouri. Well, I'm from up north. Just a few hundred miles north of Cuba. Yeah, Florida. God's country. It's where I grew up. I mentioned in some of my videos, fishing Lake Okeechobee, St. John River, stuff like that. And I did. Uh, I was a Navy brat. So if occasionally you detect a southern draw... That's where it come from. Um, I have lost a good portion of my accent. And my wife will attest to that. But every now and then it comes out. But I've lost a lot of it. One of these days I have a funeral for it. And go in mourning for a little while. A little girl being a smart aleck. I wonder where she got that from. So. I'm about done. Got this all wrapped up. We'll bring it to the end. Kind of wrapped in that thread. I'll cut that off here in a second. Should have left just a little more tag than what I got right here. 
But you know, already this don't look bad. Since I put that super glue on there and it's thicker super glue, it's not the real thin stuff, but not gel. Gel would probably work fine, but I prefer the liquid, just the thicker liquid. But gel would probably work fine in this application. Um, it does tend to dry a little bit faster, but for what I'm doing, I would have worked okay. So I'm going to tie another double overhand. Get it good and tight. I'm going to glue it, trim it off. And I'm going to have me a functional fishing pole. Everybody's got busted rods laying around. So, if you got a busted rod, you got spare parts. I got my double overhand. Now, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap that back around like that. A little bit of glue left on there. That's going to stay in place. And like I said, not the prettiest job, but functional. Keyword, function. I'm going to put some super glue on there. I'm going to gob it on. Because I want it to soak in. Certainly want to get where that knot was. Certainly want to get it pretty thick. You say, well, you should use rod varnish. I don't know about you. I don't carry that in my pickup truck. <laughs> but you're right. I should. This is not a professional rod building tutorial. This is, hey, I messed up my rod and I need to fix it. Now, what I forgot to do... What I was going to do, I had a Sharpie and I was going to color that black, make it match a little bit. But you know I'm not all that worried about it. And I can still color over it here in a little bit after it's dried. And once that glue's dried, I'll, uh, I'll clean it up a little bit. I'm going to trim my tag end of the black thread. I'll trim that after the glue is dry. And now all I've really got to do is let it sit and dry. I got a functional straight casting. Rod with a good eye on it. <laughs> so, if a backwoods central Florida swamp raised redneck like me can fix that, anybody watching this video should be able to do it. Um, again, not the prettiest. When I get done, there's going to be a few little globs and whatnot. Maybe take a little bit of sandpaper, clean it up. Um, but again, I'm not that worried about it. As it drips, I can clean it a little bit. But to me, I think it's going to be just fine. And that little tag in will come off. I'll just snip that here in a little bit once it's all dry. But that's all it takes. Say, so how long is that going to last? Could be days, could be years, but it bought you some time with the fishing rod, right? Could have saved your trip, could have saved your tournament. Not the prettiest. Shouldn't affect sensitivity at all. It's certainly going to look like somebody repaired it, but who cares? 
Again, that was a cheap rod, but I've seen this done on three, four hundred dollar rods because a guy had two and one busted and one he broke an eye. And he's out in a tournament. Watch Roland Martin do this with some pretty expensive favorite rods that he had that were broke. So it's a it's something to keep in mind. Something else to keep in mind when you do break rods, save them. You got real seats. You got pieces of rod you can use for ferrules to do repairs. If I bust another one and I've got a piece that I can make a repair out of, I'll do a video on that. But, you know, with some tools that you probably already got, some sort of a thread, you could use twine, probably dental floss if you if it's not waxed, thread, whatever. Um, if you have braided fishing line, everybody uses that now, that would work just fine. Super glue, pocket knife, something to degrease it, something to clean it up, and that's all you need. So this is Veteran Outdoorsman. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to do. I'll catch you later. God bless you.